Well, welcome to Spirituality 101. Uh, this week we're looking at uh, the sacraments. And the word sacrament sounds kind of fancy or kind of like religious gobbledygook. You know, it sounds like a word people in religion might thoughtlessly use while people outside the religion say, huh? A quick search in Google calls a sacrament an outward sign or ritual of an inward blessing, a physical thing with spiritual significance, an outward sign of spiritual grace, words like mystery, sacred, and even allegiance are interspersed among the various definitions. A common thread here is that a sacrament is a ritual that involves a physical representation of a deeper meaning. These physical elements of Christianity involve three things, water, bread, and wine. The water is for a ritual called baptism, and the bread and wine are for a ritual called the Lord's Supper, Communion, or the Eucharist, depending on your tradition. This week we'll focus on just the Lord's Supper. The origin of this ritual came from Jesus. On the last night of his life, Jesus and his friends had a meal together. At that meal, he took some bread and he told them that this bread was his body and to take and eat it. And then he took some wine and said that this wine was his blood and to drink it. And he told them to do this as a way of remembering him. And Christians have been doing this ever since. It's one tradition that Christians everywhere acknowledge, but it doesn't have the same universal meaning for everyone. People have been splitting hairs over this for a thousand years. One of the big things people squabble over is, does the bread and wine represent the body and blood of Jesus, or are they in fact the actual body and blood of Jesus? I like how the UCC gets around this old worn out dichotomy. The UCC writes that the sacraments are ultimately a personal experience that cannot be fully explained through doctrine or description. Maybe we can leave it at a mystery. Jose believes X, great. Josephine believes Y, great. I think the thing is to be at the table, together. And for this reason, I like to call it communion. We're communing together in community. We are at the same table. We're remembering the life and example of Jesus together. And who is this person we're remembering? Well, he was someone who didn't count the cost. Instead, he was someone who brought everything to the table for us, his body and his blood. There are people you come across sometimes in life whose example is so compelling that it causes you to pause and reflect. Jesus is one such life. To come to the table with him present is to examine oneself. The table is both simultaneously private and communal. On the private side, I come to that table knowing deep down I have not followed the example of Jesus in so many ways. and I don't deserve a place at the table. And maybe that's the grace. For too long, some branches of Christianity have turned communion into a worthiness challenge. Only those who have done X, Y, and Z can partake. At the UCC, it's a free meal, open to everyone. We remember Jesus even welcomed to that table a man he knew would betray him that very night. And that is perhaps the deepest essence of the table to me. We will go out and betray the faith, betray the, the ideals, betray the way we were meant to live, and yet we are still invited back to that table with him. That to me is the private journey, a very humble meal, but a meal with love, grace, and forgiveness at its core. On the public side, there is just something about coming together around a table 
as brothers and sisters. There's a vulnerability about it. We all bring ourselves to that table. It may seem like nothing, but one of the problems in our country today is that we don't share meaningful rituals together. The grocery store, the gas station, the post office are all places we meet, but how meaningful are they? We are a society with hardly any communal rituals. There was a time when more people used to go to meet at church, the synagogue, or the mosque. More people came together to do meaningful rituals. And we rubbed shoulders with people like the Smiths, who we knew voted for that other party. But because we shared time and goals and rituals together, broke bread, we still knew that the Smiths were good people. Now, we stay home, we read a screen, we stick to our tribe, and we lost the communal. We don't know the Smiths anymore. It's easy for us to believe they're really not that good of people. So I'm not saying that the divisions in our country stem from people not going to church. But I'm saying we don't meet around a common table of vulnerability and participate in any meaningful rituals. We have lost the shared sacrament. And something seems like it's coming apart. And finally, as religious religions go, it's pretty rare to have a God come in the form of food. To Gandhi, who was a Hindu, it made a lot of sense in such a hungry world that God would come to us as food it made sense to him. Christianity employs physical symbols, symbols to help us remember the example of Jesus. And these can be transformational because we can slowly become more like the one we attend to mentally. If we think and imagine X, we stand a chance of becoming more like X. So it's important to remember. And finally, I'd like to end with one of my favorite communion stories. His name is Harry Vassal in New Mexico. He's a Franciscan priest who rode the rails in the 1970s and 80s as a hobo priest. His thinking was that no one in, was ministering to these people riding the rails. And so he traveled back and forth across this country riding the rails illegally while trying to minister to these people who jumped on trains illegally. He never told people he was riding the rails that he was a priest right away. But if it came up why he was out there, he'd tell them. One time in a switchyard, such an occasion rose. And one of the hobos said, well, if you're a priest, then I want to celebrate the Eucharist. It's been, it's been years. So Brother Harry said, well, what do we got? One guy said, I got some cookies. Another said, well, I got some whiskey. Harry said, good enough. So right there on a wooden crate, Harry started to say the mass. But just then a railroad police officer, someone they called Bull, who could either kick them off the, kick them out of there or arrest them, drove up and saw Brother Harry blessing the whiskey and cookies. The bull must have thought, hey man, that's so strange, I'm just gonna let this one go. And he drove off. And right then in the middle of Brother Harry doing his Eucharistic ritual, the guy shouted, now I know you're a priest. Because if you weren't, we'd have all been arrested. And I'm not sure that that story is gonna do much for you. I, I really doubt that you ride the rails. But there's something about the spirit of that story that gets me. Jesus comes to the hungry, the down and out, at the wood crate, even in the illegal places like the switchyard. Our God can come to us as wine or grape juice or whiskey. Our God can come as baked bread or unleavened bread or cookies. I'm not sure our God is picky. Our God just wants to welcome all of us to the table. Have us 
remember where we came from. Amen. Next week we'll be back and talking about baptism. Thanks for joining us and hope you have a good week.